All right, all right, all right. It is time. We're wrapping up this transmission job. We're doing valve body today. I promised you guys that uh, I'd show you the valve body. Well, here we are. So, without further ado, valve body. Ooh, ah. Okay, step one, remove the filter, done. Now, a little tidbit of info for you. If you're running a 4x4 model, you have a filter that has this extension, and that's because they run a deeper pan. So, with the new filter, it's for a non 4x4 model, and it has a different hole. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but for now, the filter can just get put aside. Now we start looking on the bottom. This is the bottom of our valve body, right? The filter sticks on the pan. We're going to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts. And then we're going to take the whole assembly and flip it over. And from there, we're going to remove the rest of them to get it apart. And we just take it. And we flip it over and we can get at the rest of the screws. So now there is, I think they're all 8mm or 5 16 headed bolts. There are screws that go in the sides in the plates to hold the valves in, but those we'll get to later. Right now we're pulling this cover off and we're going to uh, try not to lose any of the check balls. Now this is a little stud. It's a stopper, I believe. It's a bolt, and it's going to have to go in on the inside of this little steel plate right here that comes out below the manual valve for shifting and the throttle control valve for kick down. Okay, there we go. So first things first, I'll tell you right now, I did not see where this spring went. So I believe it sits right here in this groove, if I remember correctly. Um, but we're going to leave that for... I, I do have a good manual on the valve body, so I'm not too concerned. Same with this one here. Now this is a spring, and on the end it's got this little piston cup. We need to keep those together, and they ha that has to go back in its spot over here. Now we do have some check balls, I'm seeing. And, I don't know if you guys can see, I'll try to zoom in the separator plate for you. Here, I'll just pick the whole thing up. There are little chunks of material. Do you hear that? Because I heard that. Okay, there's little chunks of material in different pockets of the valve body. That's why it's important to be very thorough when cleaning. Now I get to find out where those little noises came from. Oh, it was just a separator plate gasket starting to separate, thankfully. Now, because we're going to use a different separator plate, we can put this aside with the shift kit. And this is the gasket for it as well. That can go aside. Now, as in aside, it's going in the garbage after I decide if it's the exact right system. Very important, some kits come with multiple valve body uh, uh, separator plate gaskets. Very important to match them all up and make sure the holes are right. Okay, it looks like there's no check balls in the bottom here. So one thing you need to know is if it's flat, it has to be dead flat. If it is warped at all, it's not going to work and you'll have to draw file it or something. We're going to check it with a sanding block and hopefully it's flat enough to use. So he can sit off to the side. Our separator plate, we count one, two, three check balls. And just to aid myself in assembly, I'm going to take a picture of the position of them right now. There we go, three check balls. Look at them. Those two are the same size. All three are the same size. That's good. 
we don't have to worry about them getting in the wrong place so now this separator plate see because these deposits what they end up can do is they can plug up these little orifice tubes or little orifice holes they're, they're just for fluid direction and they either slow down or help apply a valve and uh, if they get plugged up with this junk well that valve's not going to work anymore okay so first thing I'm going to do is see how the manual valve is retained oh okay there's a little pin I'm gonna see if it moves easy if it doesn't we can probably leave it in there because we can definitely clean around it yeah it doesn't want to move it'll go one way but not the other and we need it to go the other way so we're gonna leave it because the manual valve it moves nice and free feels great next up we're gonna start pulling all these bolts out and this is where you've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valves of some kinds. And you're going to want to be careful with them. You don't want the springs to go all springy spring on you. Hope you like that term, springy spring. Now they shouldn't come flying out, but you never know. There, nice and easy. And that separator, that plate looks uh, pretty good. You can see they actually have a port passage for a couple of valves to share some fluid pressure. And all the transmission does, like you saw the air checking on all the clutches and all that jazz. All this little spaghetti mess here does is give path of flow to apply or release different valves depending on what gear and what your throttle and speed inputs are. That's literally it. All right, now I'm going to put that over here. I'm going to take another cleanish rag. I'm just going to start by pulling things out. Now, this one you might need to keep note of it's dual springs. Here comes the valve, just a short little guy. It's probably a two part valve. Another one. Yeah. Now we still got stuff in there. So now we tip it down and we pull out more. Being mindful of what spots it comes out of. See, I pulled him out, but he's still in there. So I left a gap over here on my spot. That's the rest of this guy with the spring. And this should be the rest of the second hole. There we go. Now, whenever you've got one that's kind of stuck, and you can look inside and you can see if anything is actually left over in there. There is one part of a spool valve in there. And other than that, i got to pull. So i got two valves still in there. And this is what I like to do. Very gently with your screwdriver. You should use a brass pick. I do have one, but I don't know where it's at right now. Story of my life. You just gently, without nicking the polished sides of the valve, you just pull it out. There we go. I almost screwed up. I had it upside down, right? Now the other one is in there. And I should be able to, so counting from that side, one, two, three, four. There he is. One, two, three, four. So he sat in there like this, he would have gone inside the spring, yada, yada. Alright, so these two screws are going to go this way.
All right, this is our last big one. Like I said, I'm leaving the manual valve in and I'm leaving the throttle valve. I can feel it moving nice and free. Uh, what do you think? Should I pull it out? Maybe I'll pull it out. Let me show you how to do that. Inside this port right here, there is a steel uh, retainer. You take that steel retainer, push down, and then you grab, oh, I'm out of the way here. Uh, hmm. Okay, you push down on it and then you can grab it and gently pick it up and that's it that guy right there he just slides into that groove and retains the spring in the valve so now I can take the manual valve that's the spring and then here comes the valve not the manual valve this is a kick down valve and he's still a little sticky in the board. The reason why he's sticky though is not because it's wore out or something weird. It's because of the the fluid. The fluid just adds a layer of almost like a sealant to it, you know? Alright, you get over there. You get right there. And taking a look, that's all of those. So last but not least, we have this valve right here. Which you can see the, the spring on it. So now same thing, it's got a retainer, so you want to push this plug in to retain and then pry this guy out nice and gently. Now this is a slightly different retainer. You can see it's just this uh, spring steel. That's it. So again, I'll put him there. And then give this guy a couple little taps there now he's loosened off and I might have to push it out with the valve I guess There he goes. See, inside of him, there's another valve. There it is. You got to make sure all of these get cleaned too, not just a couple and it's good. All of it has to be cleaned up. So now we can get the springs, and there's a little cup on the end of that one just to make it more interesting. And the last valve. There it is. Now this is ready for cleaning. Okay, so cleaning a valve body, uh, literally I'm going to do the same that I did with my transmission parts. Clean it in clean Verisol, brake clean it down, blow it out. Alright, just some 400 grit sandpaper, sticky back. I'm sure there's lots of other things fellas could want to use. But this is exactly what I want to use. Put it on one of my short solid sanders. Like they say Durablock are flexible, but this guy is non-flexible. I should be using a actual solid rubber uh, sander, but I haven't had this steer me wrong yet. Alright, now if we take a look, she's all pretty bright. That means that we're almost all the same level. There's some minute, minute little dark spots, but we're happy. We could put a straight edge across this and we won't see enough deviation to ever worry about. This is in perfect shape. So we'll set him aside, and then we do the same thing to this guy. I don't have to go any further than that. It is already beautiful. Yeah, no dark spots, no lower spots. That's how you would see warpage. You would see it dark in the middle, say, or dark off to the side when you're sanding across evenly. So that guy's good. I can put the sandpaper and the sanding block away.